Earlier, we talked about the start of the Chinese New Year, but today we're also talking about the start of another big event in Pittsburgh. It's the start of the Pittsburgh Humanities Festival. It's presented by the Pittsburgh Cultural Trust and Carnegie Mellon University, and it brings together internationally known artists, academics, and innovators for nine full days of exploring our past, present, and future in art, literature, music, science, policy, and more. Here with a preview of what we can expect are Randall Miller, Director of Special Projects for the Pittsburgh Cultural Trust, and David Shumway, Director of the Humanities Center at Carnegie Mellon University. Good morning, guys. Morning. morning. So this was described as smart talk about stuff that matters. What can people expect over these nine days? Well, they can expect um, entertaining conversations, stimulating talks, um, an experience where um, their minds will be expanded, um, but they'll have fun doing it. And so tell us about some of the highlights, the, the ticketed events that are coming up in the cultural district. Sure. So, so the, the, the festival is broken down into core conversations and featured events. And so the larger events take place in the, the first one will be Guy Raz, February 24th at the Byam Theater. Um, Guy Raz is an NPR personality, uh, popular podcast, How I Built This, um, TED Radio Hour. Uh, so we're really excited to have him with the NPR tie-in, which I, we think is really connected to this audience. Mm -hmm. And you also have National Geographic Live. Yes, yeah. So uh, Nazir Ibrahim uh, will be talking about the discovery of the Spinosaur, uh, which is the largest predatory dinosaur in, uh, that was discovered in Morocco. Very cool. And that was recent, wasn't it? Um, yes, fairly recently. And uh, what's exciting about this, too, is that we are partnering with Carnegie Museums to have a dinosaur roaming the lobby during that event for photo ops. So, wow. Yeah, super Very fun. neat. So maybe something you could bring the kids to. Yeah, absolutely. You can bring the kids. In dinosaurs. Um, we are the XX, is that right? Yes. Yeah, we are the XX is a, a feminist um, media group who most notably created a docu-series called A Woman's Place, The Front Lines of Feminism. And so the video you're seeing here, they, they flew around the world to interview women that they felt to be revolutionary in some way. And that includes uh, female wrestlers in synagogue, Sen Senegal, sorry, um, and um, also um, a woman who created an app to log harassment. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So very, very powerful conversations. Um, also, well, speaking of conversations, these core conversations, as you mentioned, there are 14 of them lined up. I know you wanted to mention just a few of them. Um, David, can you tell us about Requiem for Rice? Uh, Requiem for Requiem, Rice is a, um, a musical um, a piece that uh, Dr. Etta Fields from Carnegie Mellon's History Department is writing a libretto for. It's, it's done in the traditional style of requiems like from Mozart and Verdi, but it's, it's commemorating the enslaved people who built the Carolina rice culture um, back in the 18th and, and 19th centuries. And we also have the fearless Benjamin Lay. When is that coming up? Uh, that's on uh, Saturday, March 3rd, and uh, that's a talk or, or conversation with Marcus Redeker, who's an internationally renowned historian, uh, famous for writing about pirates, but this book is about a Quaker dwarf who was a, a staunch abolitionist uh, who insisted on the freeing, the need to free all enslaved African peoples, uh, and he did this way before abolitionism became a big movement. And what else is coming up there for the core conversations? Um, and then on Sunday, we're having um, Steve Silberman, who is the author of Neurotribes, which is a book about the history of autism and the need for neurodiversity. We need, the, the idea is we need to value people whose brains function in different ways. And so when we talk about these core conversations, is this a lecture or are people engaged? Are they encouraged to uh, um, talk? Well, and there are uh, some of the some of the core conversations are uh, lectures, but there's always a Q and A. Oh, great! Uh, and some of them are interviews, so that uh, there are two people on stage in conversation. Very cool. So, how did the idea of having this come about? Why is this now an annual thing? I think it's extremely important to have here, but why an annual thing now for this? Right. right. Um, so. Uh, the first two were project based and so uh, I think the the question you're asking is why is the humanities festival valuable in Pittsburgh and uh, I think the tagline for the festival says it all that it is smart talk about stuff that matters and it gives people an opportunity to be um, 
both educated and entertained. Um, so that's why it's in the, the cultural district of the city instead of at a university campus, um, because there's entertainment value here, but also um, because these are conversations that we should be having. Do you think that these are conversations that children can be a part of? I mean, is this something that families can come to, some of them? A absolutely. Yes. And so one of the core conversations, which David didn't mention, is Jonathan Oxier, who's a young author or a author for young audiences mm -hmm. um, who will be speaking about his work and creative process so that definitely works and as we mentioned the National Geographic will have dinosaurs in the lobby right. so yeah it's always good when you can engage kids early right so. mm -hmm. that's right thank you so much for uh, coming in today and telling us a little bit about this mm -hmm. and so much happening of course for the hum Pittsburgh Humanities Festival we can't cover it all we just gave you a, sl a small sampling of things that are happening you need to go to the website to see all the exciting programming for the festival it's February 24th and runs through March 4th we want to thank the Pittsburgh Cultural Trust and the Humanities Center at Carnegie Mellon University for making it all possible